Finding a seat and sitting in it. That is the key. That is the key. All right, well, let's get started. So I missed you guys. It's been a couple weeks now since I got to hang out with you. It's been kind of weird. Anybody else have that weird feeling on a Sunday night the last couple weeks? You're like, I should be doing something, but it's, I'm just sitting here. It just seems strange. So hopefully you guys enjoyed your break. Um, unfortunately, your break ends soon, right? Because most of you are going back to school on Tuesday. Some of you might even have to go back tomorrow if you're like a homeschooler or something. Um, I think some of the college guys don't have to go back for a couple weeks, so they're probably in a good spot. I had to go back to work last Thursday, so I don't feel bad for any of you finally having to get up early, um, because that's just what you should have to do eventually. So, for those of you that don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Brandon. I am the youth director up here at 155. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not an official pastor or anything like that. I'm just uh, a volunteer uh, youth director guy, but I love teenagers, so that's why I'm here. So uh, everything you hear from me, good luck. So here we go. Um, before we get started, by a show of hands, let me ask you guys a question. And don't answer until I give you all the details. The question is, have you ever been in a fight? Now, before you raise your hand, this has to be like a legit fight, not any of that, pull me back, pull me back, or your mom is so ugly, none of that. I mean like legit punch or slap somebody upside the head. Anybody here been in a fight? Yeah. Violent, lots of violent. My staff especially, my staff is a real mess. Lots of violence, man, man. All right, so. Now, now, another show of hands real quick, and let's see the honest people in the room. Raise your hand if you've ever lost a fight. Ever lost a fight. Yeah. I have definitely lost a fight. Um, it was really my first fight was my first loss, so I guess I'm 0-1 uh, as far as the fighting goes. Uh, I was in sixth grade, the kid was like in eighth grade, he was kind of a nerdy guy. I thought I could easily take him. Uh, unfortunately, when he punched me in the face the first time, uh, I pretty much turned and ran like a girl. Um, that was the extent of my first fight. Uh, I didn't get another one for a real long time after Robert punched me straight in the face. So, I just wanted to find out kind of where we're at as far as warfare, getting in fights. Um, but it seems like we got plenty of violence in the room. So, if you guys open your bulletin tonight, there's this white card in there. We call that our connection card. Um, I ask that you fill that out on the front. If you're a regular person, you come here all the time, just, you know, your name is probably plenty. Make it legible so that when I give away prizes later tonight, if I can't read your name, you don't get the win. So make sure your name is legible on there. Tonight we're kicking off a brand new series called Warfare, as you guys can see. And we are really excited about this. Um, Chris and Chesney and I get together and plan all the messages, and, and we are really excited about this series, which is going to be going for a little while. And really what warfare is about is about spiritual warfare. And so tonight, I'm going to start by answering eight common questions about spiritual warfare. Now before you panic, I'm not going to answer all eight. I'm only going to answer two, and then Chris will answer some later. And so over the next couple weeks, we'll answer, we'll answer eight. But tonight, I'm only going to answer the first two of the eight questions about spiritual warfare. Now, let me tell you, before we start is, this was kind of a tough topic for me because I, I've only been a Christian about eight years and, and I, I don't know a lot, but I know enough. And I've never really gotten into this whole heaven versus hell and angels versus demons and good versus evil thing. I've, I've just never gone that way with the Bible before. It's always been about Jesus to me. And as long as I live like Jesus, all's good. So it took a lot of studying for me to kind of come up with this. And so if you're sitting here tonight and you're like, what? Angels and demons, heaven and hell? Don't tune me out yet. I, I think, you, you know, I, I think you'll get it once we start talking about it. So if, if you're ready to tune me out, don't yet. We're, it's going to get good. And we're not talking about the funny little angels and demons that you might see in movies. We're talking about the real thing here. But as, as we kind of get started, I think you'll understand. So, let's start with the number one question, the top thing on your bulletin there. First question about spiritual warfare is, 
First, what is spiritual warfare? That's probably a pretty good place to start, right? And simply put, spiritual warfare is really just the fight between good and evil. And so, and let me be clear, there are definitely things that are good and definitely things that are evil. Now, the news or society or whatever may try to make that sound funny like, oh, it's not really bad for everybody, just the people that die, you know, and, and stuff like that. But there's definitely a difference between good and evil. And so, you know, like maybe good is your parents buying you a brand new car. Was that good? Is that a good thing? Yeah. How about when you, how about when you ace a test that you really didn't study for and you probably didn't deserve it? Is that good? That, that's good, right? Um, how about going to the beach for the whole summer? Would that be good? Right? Good. Right. Going to the beach would be good. So, so there's definitely good things out there, right? Babies, puppies, good things like that, right? So, you notice I didn't say cats for Chris Wilson. So, so, so there's definitely good things out there, but there's also definitely bad or evil things out there, right? So, a random gunman walks into an elementary school and starts shooting little kids. That's evil. That's bad. No matter no matter how anybody tries to spin it, that's bad. A teenage girl getting raped. Definitely a bad, evil thing, right? Maybe, maybe parents getting divorced and breaking up a family. A bad thing, right? It's kind of happened that that's a bad thing. So there's definitely some good versus bad going on out there. And we just want to make sure that we kind of understand what the difference is between good and bad. And so there's a lot of thoughts out there really on what makes somebody bad or evil. And people might say it's a... It's a psychological issue or a social thing, or maybe they, you know, they weren't raised right, or or whatever it is. And really, I don't believe it's either one of those. I think for me, it comes down to bad or evil is really a spiritual issue when you come down to the very bottom of it. And so, let's look first at uh, what Paul is writing uh, in the book of Ephesians. He's writing to the church and kind of telling this church, this is how a church should act. And he's kind of straightened them out a little bit, but at the end, he's kind of explaining to them that there's this thing going on, that spiritual warfare that they need to be conscious of. And so it's in your bulletin, it's up on the screen here, and it says, Finally, let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. Put on all the armor that God gives us so that you can defend yourself against the devil's tricks. We are not fighting against humans. We are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. And so Paul, who's, who's under the influence of the Holy Spirit as he writes this, is admitting and saying there is a devil. There is a devil and he uses tricks and schemes to try to make our life worse and we have to have the protection of God to protect us from those tricks and schemes. So, there definitely is a devil, there definitely is God, I, I'm all in on that one for sure, but there's definitely a devil out there that's kind of this counter thing that's fighting, and Paul confirms that as he's, as he's writing to this church. So, before we talk too much about the devil, though, let's talk about God a little bit, because we want to kind of confirm some things about God as we compare him to the devil. And so let's start with God is, and, and it says God is all-powerful. So, God has unlimited power to do anything that you can even imagine. Things you can't imagine, God can, can do those things. God is all-powerful, and he can do anything he needs to. Also, God is all-knowing. And so he knows our thoughts, our dreams, the things that are in our mind and our heart. There are no secrets from God. As soon as you think it or even start to, you know, before you even think it, God knows about it. So there are no secrets from God. God is all-knowing. And also, God is everywhere. And that's what a lot of people have a hard time understanding because they think of God as a man. And God is not just a man. He is everywhere. So he can be with you and with you and in California and in Georgia and all these places at one time because God is everywhere. And God created the devil. And we'll talk about that in the next couple of weeks of kind of why he created the devil. But the devil, essentially, for those of you that don't know, was an angel that was in heaven. 
And he got cast out of heaven, along with about a third of the other angels, who are now demons. And they all got cast down to hell, essentially. And we're going to talk in a few minutes here about probably why the devil, well, definitely why the devil got cast out of heaven. But if we look at this list of God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere, if we compare that to the devil, or Satan, as some people might refer to him as, the key is Satan is not all-powerful. He is, there's plenty of things the devil can't do. If you look at the, the book of Job, where, where the devil is just attacking Job, he pretty much has to ask God's permission to do things to Job, because the devil is not all-powerful. He can't do everything that God can do. Also, the devil is not all-knowing. He doesn't know what's going on in your heart and in your mind. He can put thoughts and feelings into your heart and mind, but he can't read what's going on in your heart and mind. So God, the devil is not all-knowing. And also, the devil can't be everywhere. So the devil can be here or there, but he, he's not attacking everybody at one time. Now he has some demons out there that can do all sorts of terrible things, but the devil cannot be everywhere like God can't be everywhere. So really, if you look at the list of God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere, Satan is really none of the above. He, he can't do any of those things that God can do. And that's good news for us, right? Because God's on our side, and so... I like the real powerful guy on my side rather than the guy that can't do any of those things. So, um, so definitely a good place to be. But the tricky thing about the devil is the devil wants you to believe that he's not evil. But he is. And, and many people refer to the devil as the great deceiver because that's, that's kind of his trick is that he wants you to believe that he's not evil and and it's good for you, and, and you know he's helping you in, in the way that he, he tricks and, and manipulates things. So in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, it even says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Because that's what he's trying to do, is, is masquerade and pretend like he's doing these good things that maybe an angel might do for you, but his agenda is completely different. And so... Now that we kind of know who God and the devil are as we talk about the spiritual warfare thing, let's talk about question number two on your outline. And really this question boils down the rest of the night is, why should I care? If you're sitting here and you're just listening to the first, you know, ten minutes of this and you're like, that's great, Brandon, but why should I care? Let's talk about why you should care. There is a fight happening every day versus good versus evil. And, and it's happening to you, around you, all the time. Have you guys ever seen like on a TV show or a movie where the person gets like a little angel on one shoulder and a devil on another shoulder, and he's like talking back and forth side to side? Who, who, who's seen that? Anybody seen that? Good, good. Does anybody ever feel like they have that going on sometimes? Like they, they have two options they could do, and they're like, Mm, not sure. That's that, that's really that fight between good and evil going on, and that's what that feels like. Is you kind of have that one thing going. You know, I should do this, but man, that sounds easier to do that. And so I face that pretty much every day. I mean, it, it, there's always chances for me to make a decision, and everything I do, kind of a good versus evil, and, and maybe evil is the wrong word. And God, or the devil would never use the word evil. He, he would, he would not, not want to make it sound so bad, right? So he doesn't ever want to say the word evil because that sounds like something, oh, I'd never do something evil. So maybe it's, you know, I should do the right thing or I should do this other thing. Maybe it's not an evil thing. It's just the other thing. But it's definitely not the good thing. And so maybe, you know, maybe one night you're sitting at home and you have this huge test coming up and you're like, man, this teacher's so hard. I need to study for this test, and it's so tough. But I was talking to my friend, and, and my friend said that last time they just cheated on the test, and it was really easy because the teacher's a total idiot. So maybe I should just write the answers down on my arm or something and just cheat. Right? That's good versus evil. Anytime that thought even pops into your head, that's spiritual warfare. So even if you ignore it immediately, you're like, I would never do that. If that thought pops into your head, 
That's the devil. That's spiritual warfare going on right inside you when those thoughts pop in, even if you immediately dismiss them, they pop into your head. Watch out. So, in verse John, oh, sorry. In verse John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus is talking, and he says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So Jesus is very clear. Regardless of what it seems like about that other thing, the devil has one agenda, and that is to steal, kill, and destroy. And even if that's small things building up over time, that's what he's thinking. God would never put that thought in your head of maybe I should cheat on the test. That's always the devil doing that. And whichever decision you make when those little things pop up really starts to build what we would call your character or your integrity. And every time you make a decision, builds one way or the other. So it builds positive character or it builds negative character or integrity. So every time you make a decision, it's kind of like you're making a decision that's going to keep building either way. So the more bad decisions you make, the easier it is to make bad decisions further down the road. And all of a sudden, you know, you hear about things like, you know, gateway drugs, right? Because people decide, well, I'm, I'm just going to try marijuana. Everybody says it's harmless. And they say marijuana is a gateway drug because pretty soon you get bored of marijuana and the next thing you're, you're doing molly and you're doing, you know, cocaine and whatever it is, you're, you're moving down this path because it's just little steps that you're building your character, your integrity, the wrong direction. You're going, you're going the wrong way with it because it's just little things over and over and over. So, in 1 Peter 5 and 8 it says, Be on your guard and stay awake. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion. Now notice, notice right there it says, like a roaring lion. Just so we're perfectly clear, there's even a song all about it. Jesus is the lion. The devil only wishes he was like a lion. That's as good as he can get is being like a lion. He will never be the lion. He is like a lion, pretending to kind of be there and be that thing. So it says, your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion sneaking around to find someone to attack. So he's looking for those weak moments in your life where you're just too tired to do the right thing. You're just too exhausted. You're, all your friends are doing it. He's looking for those little opportunities in your life to, to take advantage of that. So question number two was, I said, why should I care? So let's talk about that some more. And I have this huge long verse to kind of go along with that. And really this verse is really about the fall of Satan and kind of what happened and, and why he was kicked out of heaven. So it's in Isaiah, Isaiah 14, 12, is where it starts, and it says, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid, down, laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Anybody else notice all those I wills in that statement? That's a lot of I wills. And that's really what Kick got the devil kicked out of heaven is selfishness. He wanted to be greater than God. That's what he, he saw. And so really when you boil it all down, spiritual warfare looks a lot like selfishness. Every time you see yourself putting your needs above somebody else's, that's spiritual warfare. And it's so easy to do, so easy to put your needs in front of somebody else. So, so maybe, you know, I'm, I'm very guilty of, I'm very sarcastic, and so it's really easy for me to cut somebody down like with some, you know, total digger against them. Every time I do that, I'm making them look bad, and I'm making me look good or funny or whatever. That's bad. That's me putting myself above somebody else. And so, anytime you do that, 
and you use that greed or that selfishness to make yourself better than somebody else, that's spiritual warfare. Every time you talk back to your parents just to make yourself win the argument, that's spiritual warfare. You're putting your needs above somebody else's. And it's so hard to not put your needs in front of Because we are selfish people. Raise your hand if you're selfish. Yes, we are selfish people. We cannot help it. That's just how we're designed. But that's what spiritual warfare, that's what got Satan kicked out of heaven was his selfishness got to such a high level that he got kicked out of heaven for it. That's what spiritual warfare is all about. So, I'm going to go back really quick and look at again 2 Corinthians 11:14, and it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. And really the, the weird part about this is selfishness doesn't always look like bad things. It, it often looks like good things for us. It, it, you know, it seems like, hey, I should definitely do that. That seems like a good thing. It doesn't seem like a bad thing when we're being selfish a lot of times. Because that's how, kind of how we're designed. We all agree, you know, we're selfish. That's what we do. But that's really what Satan is all about in the spiritual warfare thing is tempting you with these good things quotation mark, good things that you might be thinking about. He's not looking, you know, most people don't start off with, you know, going from, they come to church one night and then they go on a random gun shooting the next night, right? That's, that's kind of a different extreme, right? There's, there's good and then there's super evil. That's not what the devil's tempting you with. He's tempting you with just kind of what you might think of as good things, but isn't what God really wants from your life. And so the point for tonight that I really want you guys to think about is, if you will settle for the good things that the devil tempts you with, you won't be able to achieve the great things that God wants for you. Because that's what God wants for you. The great things in your life, that's what God wants. The devil's going to tempt you with good or average or mediocre. God wants great things for you. And it is so easy to settle for something else. So, Maybe you settle for a B in that class when you know if you worked a little bit harder, you could probably get an A. That's settling. That's the devil winning, right? God wants great things from you, not just good things for you from you. Maybe, maybe you're a girl and you decide to just, you know, settle for this guy to go out with because, you know, you haven't had a boyfriend in a while. And he's, he's okay, you know, he'll do for now type of thing. God wants a great man for your life, not just the, some good guy that might be showing you some attention. God wants a great man for you. So settling, once again, it makes it hard for you to find a great man if you're with just some good man, right? Don't settle. Maybe, maybe you've already been, you know, you've always thought, hey, I want to go to this when I graduate high school. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to go be a veterinarian, right? All your friends are going, dude, that's going to be hard. You've got to go to school for a long time. You're like, ah, you're right. Maybe I'll just be a pharmacist instead. Right? It's like, you, you, so, you know, you pick, you pick good. You settle for good when God wants great things for you. Don't settle. Don't settle. God has great things planned for your life. And, and that's really what the devil is going to do is tell you that's good enough. Oh, you got to be in that class. That's good enough. Oh, you didn't study for the SATs. Don't worry, nobody does. You know, that's the stuff that the devil's going to get you with. Is that good enough? A while back, I had an interesting conversation with a, a teenage girl, and, and it really kind of shocked me with this whole concept because I heard she was dating this guy, and so I asked her, I "said Hey, how are things going with that guy?" And she goes, "Ah." Oh, we, we, we stopped seeing each other. And I'm like, oh, really? What happened? She goes, well, we had this real disagreement about a section of the Bible, something biblical that we didn't agree on. So for me, that was just kind of a deal breaker. I believed one thing. He believed another. So we, we just stopped seeing each other. I'm like, really? You stopped seeing somebody over maybe what you believe happened in the Bible or, or what, you know, this, this biblical thing? And, and what she said just shocked me. And she just said, you know, I'm not dating 
for entertainment or because I'm lonely. I'm dating because I know God has a great man out there that I'm going to marry someday. So why should I settle right now for this guy that already has this red flag when I know that's not the guy I'm supposed to be with? God's already shown me the red flag, so I might as well just cut it off right now and go start looking again for the next great guy. I was so shocked because I pretty much have never heard that before from a teenage girl um, where, where they are willing to, you know, give up what seems like a good guy right now because they know God has this great guy waiting for them out there. So that does happen where people realize I'm not going to settle for good because God has something great in mind for me. And that's what I need you to care about with this whole spiritual warfare. When I say, why should I care? Is that you need to realize when it's happening to you, you need to realize when you are settling when God has something great in mind for you, and it's already in your head, it's in your heart, but you just kind of settle because it's easy or because it's too hard or, or whatever it is, that's that selfish nature of just kind of just taking it too easy and just good is good enough. And so I can tell you that, especially from the staff up here, if I polled them, I would tell you that every one of us has settled at some point. We all had something in our life that was this great thing that we were going to do or see or whatever it is, and every one of us settled. And it's that thing that just kind of will, will crawl at you and eat at you your whole life sometimes because you settled on one thing. Whatever it is, you settled at some point. And that's why we're all here, because we don't want you guys to settle. We care about you guys too much. We've all done that. We want great things for you. God wants great things for you. So that's why we give our time to be here. It's because we want great things for you. So there are huge great things out there for you. If you will just stop settling, you can have those great things. So tonight I have a question for you. And I'm going to have you answer this question in a different way than we usually do. And that question is, where do you feel God can do a great thing in your life if you will stop settling? Where is it in your life that God can do a great thing if you will stop settling? This is what we're going to do. There's some yellow cards in your bulletin there. And after, after we pray and get ready to wrap up here, I want you to think about at least one area of your life that you're willing to say, I'm not going to settle here anymore. On this thing, whatever it is, on school, on relationships, on, on being a good sister, on being a better kid, on, on whatever it is, my math class, whatever it is, what is that thing that you are not going to settle for good? You are going to go after great no matter what. And what I want you to do tonight is after the band starts playing, is I'm gonna have you write that thing on there, and I want you to come up here and just throw that card up here on the stage. And all really that is, is a sign of God, I'm gonna give this to you. God, I know you want great things for me, so I, God, I'm gonna lay it right here on this altar, on this stage, in, in an expression to show you that this is something, I am expecting something great in my life, and I'm not gonna settle for good. And God is gonna bless that. God is going to reveal himself in that area to you to show you that there's great things that he's going to do for you if you just will keep pushing and not settle. So tonight on your connection card, also on the back, there's a couple next steps I want you to look at. And it's just two of them tonight. Really it is two things. The first one is, I won't settle for good when God wants me to have great, which I hope there's something in your life where you can, you can find that one thing. So if that's your next step is, I'm going to make a conscious decision tonight to not settle in one area of my life because God wants great things for me. And the other is, if this whole discussion tonight seems totally foreign to you because you haven't made a decision to follow God with your life, tonight, tonight you can decide you know what, I need to ask Jesus into my life so that he can help me make all these right decisions through this spiritual warfare. If tonight you need to ask Jesus to be your Lord, check that box, talk to a volunteer, come up here and pray, whatever you need to do 
so that you can make sure you're on the right side of the team here as we talk about God being all powerful and the devil not having all that power. So we're going to go ahead and bow our heads and pray. And after I'm done praying, if you guys want to come up, drop your cards on the on the stage here, and then just come back out and the band's going to do some worship. God, thank you for tonight that we can just be here and just talk about not settling for good anymore, God. God, we know you have great things in store for us, great things that are going to change our lives, God. And, and maybe we